Cool. Cool. Uh, Bo here again. And uh, for this next entry, um, it's going to be a bit more controversial. It's going to be a bit more kind of like fierce. And yeah, because I feel that this is something that a lot of people need to hear um, in, you know, living in today's society. And that's to wake the fuck up. Because a lot of people in society are asleep. Like literally they are asleep. And you might be watching this and you might be like, well, that's not me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm awake. <laughs> I'm not asleep. I'm, uh, you know, I make my own, my, I make my own decisions. You know, like I, uh, I earn my keep, you know, I, I you know, I, I, I do well in the world, you know, I've, I've had loads of experiences. Well, could be true, but, um, but are you happy? Are you actually happy? Do you have an absence of that niggling little feeling that there's something missing in your life? That there's something that you could have done in life? That you had a dream, you had dreams one day, and those dreams have been kind of pushed onto the back burner. You know, are you free of those feelings? And it's okay, it's okay to basically say that you haven't, because the reality is there's a lot of people who are like this, you know? I'm recording. Um, yeah, so, so, you know, you know, what you have to get straight, right, you know, I'm just going to say it how it is, you know, society is a machine, you know, the, the part of society that you are enrolled in is a machine, and you know, um, this, I don't, this isn't like a fucking new, like, realisation, <laughs> this is like something that, you know, people have been like, you know, been aware of for like fucking centuries probably, you know, like, think like 1984, you know, that kind of thing, George Orwell which I haven't read yet, I need to read. But I've heard, you know, I've heard about the themes within it. But, um, yeah, so, society is a machine. Basically what happens is, you're born, you know, you, uh, as soon as you're, you can walk, you can, like, string a few words into a sentence, you get put into school. And then you, you're in school for, like, you know, the majority of your childhood, your early formative, formative years, you know, and eventually you go to university, which is just, like, an upgrade of school, right? And, uh, you know, you graduate from university and you go into a job, right? Standard stuff. You know, this is all in the, br the blueprint of, like, society, like, you know, what society sells is, like, the perfect life. You know, the, the stand, you know, the, the, the life, that the stable life. The normal life. And so, you know, like, many people, like, they go along and they're like, you know, well, it's... They, you know, they, they've always had this feeling that, you know... Mm, but what about what, what what about what I want? You know, like I'm doing this thing. Like people are promising me, my teachers, my parents, um, my my older friends, like you know, like my family friends. Like they're telling me that basically, like if I just stick to the system, right? That you know, one day I'm going to come out of it. And well, that's the thing, though. Like they don't even say that. It's like you know, kind of like it's like. So what happens when you when I graduate, Dad? And it's like, well. You, uh, once you graduate, you get a, you get a good job that pays well, you know, you, you have a stable means of income and to which, with which to support your family in the future and like, you know, all of your endeavours. And then you're like, but that sounds boring. <laughs> like as a kid, you're like, no, that sounds fucking boring, right? And he's like, well, that's just the way it is. That's just the, the way life is, you know, you have to bite the bullet and just fucking, <laughs> he went, yeah, you just fucking, you know, just grind it out, you know? Just stick with it, and one day you'll be able to retire, and you know, you'll be old and wrinkly. They don't say that though. They, they're like, you know, one day you'll you'll be free, basically, and then you can do whatever you want, right? But there's always that nagging feeling, you know, uh, that you you have to push down, you know, again and again because it keeps fucking coming up, and that is like, I'm not happy, I'm not happy, and a lot of people are. So are so used to that suppression, you know, that suppressing that side of them is that is basically saying like I'm not happy, truly, deep down. That they they become kind of they become like a bit it becomes like an unconscious thing. And every time they come up they have this subconscious subroutine basically. 
that kicks in whenever they get this feeling. But then because that, 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 re that um, reaction, that response in their bodies, right, in their energy structure, um, it just kicks in and, it, you know, and basically, it, it, basically it, it sweeps the rug from under the feet of, you know, that, that you know, you're, you're, in, you're in a naysayer, basically. You're in a rebel. You're in a maverick. You're in a, uh, you're in a general, you know? <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so, you know, a lot of people need to wake the fuck up. Because, what the fuck are you doing, okay? Like, literally, what the fuck are you doing with life, you know? And I don't really, I don't really want to be too harsh about it, because, you know, I was like that, you know, three years ago. If you go, if you watch, like, I'm going to make a, an updated version, but if you watch my sixth entry in my Bojanian Preachers series, which is now discontinued, if you watch that, I give you a brief account of how I got to where I was at that point in time. And I had to fucking challenge a lot of my beliefs, right? I had to basically, like, I was met with so much resistance, both internally and externally, you know? Inside, there were all of these paradigms, you know? Because, <clears throat> like I said, you know, society, it keeps selling, it keeps pushing this, like, this, like, model onto you, you know, you need, you're going to have a stable life, you're, and then you need to stick at that stable life until, like, you, you know, you pay off your debts. <laughs> and, like, yeah, because you chose your own debts, right, by that stage, you know, a lot of, a lot of students choose their own fucking debt, that's why they go to, like, fucking university doing courses that they don't actually enjoy and come out with, like, you know, 27 grand of debt. And that was, that was, like, the old days, like, now it's even more, right? Fucking ridiculous, but, um... <clears throat> Yeah, so, you know, we're conditioned to basically put that side, of, that side of us down, and I had to fight through that. And, you know, I had to resist a lot of shit that was thrown in my direction. Like, it wasn't like, you know, like, you, you shall not, you shall not do what you want, because that is impossible, it's stupid, you know. It wasn't like that, but it was like kind of this thing, right? And this leads on to what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, I'll keep it in the same one, right? I'll just kind of mention it, and then in future entries I can elaborate on it. But basically, I have a principle, right? There's a lot more to be said about this, you know? So, you know, if you're not happy, you need to think about why, you know, why you're not happy. And you need to, you need to go down, you know, the dark road that that leads you down, you know, because that's the only way you're going to be happy, you know? That's reality, that's cold reality. Literally, if like if you're unhappy, and you, you don't, it's fair, you know, fair enough. You don't know like you don't know what you can do to make yourself happy. You don't know what you can do to like that could you know to save you from all of your the life situations that you you know you've that you've like been a victim of. You know, like in terms of decision decisions made. Um, you know, like that's you know I, I you know I sympathize. I empathize even. Um, because I, I, went, I was, I was there, like, you know, three years ago, I was there, and I had to pull myself out of that shit. So if you're not happy, you know, you need to do the same, basically. And again, you know, there's a lot more to be said about that, but, um, I'm just going with the flow here, you know, energy, right? Um, yeah, so one concept that I'm going to leave you with, and I'm definitely going to elaborate on this because it's very important, is the concept that Subtlety kills, not explicitness, right? It's the, uh, I don't know, it's, it's the, uh, it's the tasty poison berries that slowly, that kill you quicker than the tiger, right? And what this means is that you go through life and basically like your like your actual biology you know even your biology even is wired in such a way that you look out for things that are like that are imminent da imminent dangers to you <clears throat> so basically you know you'll 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 like catch you'll jump out of the way of a speeding van you know like if someone throws a punch at you you you'll like kind of dodge it and that's how you generally tackle life you know you, you avoid disaster basically and therefore, you know, disaster, explicitness, you know, it's always in your consciousness, right? And you can, you can plan towards basically avoiding them and preventing them from happening. 
So it's not it's not the explicit things. It's not it's not the the rolling boulder that's like you know chasing you, that's gonna kill you faster. It's rather the things. And I know what you like. I know everyone has these things. So I'm I'm sure that you'll be able to understand what what I'm saying here. But the things that are subtle, the things that like slowly, um, they slowly claim you, but it's it's in a very ambiguous way, right? Um, you know, things like the toxic friends, you know, the frenemies, like, the, generally the people who, like, who seem nice, you know, like, you take all, you, you kind of, you look at your friendship, you look at your relationship, and you're like, like, you know, I don't, I don't know, like, they're, they're good friend, like, they're a good friend, you know, they, they're there for me, they do things for me, you know, we have good times together, but I just can't fight this niggling little feeling that I get sometimes. And notice that this is the same fucking niggling feeling, feeling that you'll get, you're getting from like, you know, just, you know, your societal conditioning, right? Same thing. There's something that feels off, but like, but you have all of these overwhelming positive qualities that basically like are, over, are overruling that, right? It's pushing down your skepticism. And, um, yeah, you know, so the, the toxic friends, the habits that you can't, the addictions that you try and rationalize, you know, like... You spend like X amount of hours watching television. You spend like X amount of hours on the internet, on social media, on forums. You spend countless hours playing video games, like I used to, you know, um, watching shows, anime. Um, you know, you you, you 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 like smoke like twenty cigarettes a day. Well, maybe not that much, but like yeah, you know, you smoke X amount of cigarettes a day, and you 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 take your time when you're smoking them, right? You drink certain amount of alcohol every week, you know. And it's these little things, right? And these things like these things might be might be your your passion. They might be something things that you love. But they're the things that you aren't aware of, that you're not suspicious of because they're subtle. They're fucking subtle. Like they don't pose themselves as as the tiger, as the rolling boulder, or as the incoming truck. They're like the the little you know, they're like the war, the wolf in sheep's clothing, you know. They tug at your heartstrings. They make they make you attracted to them. They make you emotionally dependent on them. And then when you're at least suspecting, you know, they kill you. Essentially, essentially, you know. And that's something that I have to I had to learn the hard way. You know, I, re I like I said, I used to be I used to play loads of video games. Um, I used to watch loads of junk on, on like on the internet. Um, I used to kind of just gorge on a lot of like media, like mindless media. And I, I had to consciously put all of that stuff down. Not because, like, it wasn't like, you know, like, well, there is an aspect of this, but it's not like, you know, that shit is evil, you can't do that shit, you know, like, it's gonna kill you. It's more just like a, an awareness, you know, and, um, yeah, and, you know, I'm giving that awareness to you right now, you know. Be mindful of the things that, <laughs> that you have a relationship with, but are slowly killing you, right? Just be mindful of it, you know. Um, I'm not saying you should change them overnight, but, you know, be mindful of them. And the key mechanism that this, the, the key reason that this works, you know, for, for those of you who are kind of more, like, scientifically minded, right, I'm going to give this to, to you in a language that you understand. In terms of biology, you have the fight and flight, fight, fight or flight response, biologically. So that's what happens when you meet the tiger, right? You either fight to your to death or, like, you run away. And then there's another phenomenon called, called cognitive dissonance. And these are the two paradigms, like, these are the two mechanisms that, you know, those two different uh, types of danger, you know, uh, as ascribe to. So basically, the, the fight and flight is the response that is basically, you know, the, the adrenaline response is what is triggered in you when, when you see, like, an incoming truck, like, about to smash you into pieces. But, like, you know, the subtle things, like the toxic relationships, like the addictions, you know, those kinds of things. They play into your cognitive dissonance, and when you when you understand this, you'll realize that like cognitive dissonance is like such a brilliant form of mind control. <laughs> because what cognitive dissonance means is basically what I just explained. It's uh, it's when you basically when you're not sure if you love or you hate something. You know, it's it's that state of limbo where it's like. I'm not really sure how, how I feel about this, so I'm just going to do the thing that is comfortable and stick with it. And that biological response is what a lot of these toxic things do to you. And you need to, you need to be aware of it. So, 
So, uh, yeah, I wasn't as aggressive as I thought I'd be. I thought I'd be like, you fucking, like, you, f like, you don't know what the fuck you're doing in life. Like, you don't even know that the things you love are fucking killing you slowly, killing you softly. <laughs> killing you softly with his song. I should do some more singing in my videos. And just generally be very uh, authentic. So I'm going to end it here, but, you know, what I, what I really want to, I'm hammering this home. What I really want to put across in these videos is not just my ideas, like I said in the first uh, entry. It's to show you that you can trust in yourself. You know, like you can trust yourself to speak and to articulate. You can you can trust yourself with whatever you're feeling in the moment. You should be energetically sensitive and just be yourself. You know, like the more you do that, the more fun you have. You know, the more magnetic you are, the more charismatic you are. And to trust yourself. And if you make mistakes, you know, I'm probably I've probably made a few mistakes already in this podcast. Uh, in this, you know, there we go. Freudian slip is that a double mistake but anyway it, it doesn't matter right it doesn't matter you should like life is too short this is one way of looking at it life is too short to be worrying about mistakes you should be focusing on being yourself and having fun and being free because that's what we all want you know that's part of what's contributing to that niggling little feeling you get you know the dissatisfaction that you have with life that you're suppressing so anyway I'm going to end this one here Hope it was helpful. Hope I didn't like piss you off too much. Peace.